Hello, this is Brad Queen, and I am the Energy Division Director at the Center for Resource Conservation. In this video, I'm going to describe, explain how to use an e-gauge device, the e-gauge device in your school, to give you information to compete in Renew Our Schools. This presentation, the one that I'm going through, is posted on the competition website on the Student Guides page. So if you just scroll down, you'll find it here at the top of the guides. Uh, if you click on that, it will download the presentation and you can go back to these slides after you watch the video. So before I go into the e-gauge interface, let's look at your school. So the average U.S. school looks like this, and in Colorado, the, the energy consumption in schools looks more like this. Uh, these three wedges are the ones that you have the most control over, lighting, office equipment, and other plug loads. They also comprise the majority of electricity use in your school. Looking at the e-gauge interface, there are lots of controls here. And I'll switch over to a live e-gauge interface to step through these. We'll look at a elementary school, Mead Elementary, Sunset Middle, and Longmont High School. By default, the e-gauges first show a daily view. And you can see in this elementary school, the peak load is about 90 kilowatts. And the nighttime or base load is 20 kilowatts. Uh, the thing that's important to note when you look at these curves is power is the height of the curve in kilowatts. And energy is power times time or the area under the curve. So if you look at this three hour block of time here times 10 kilowatts, that is 30 kilowatt hours, that block of time. Whereas if I look at a middle school over a day, this peak load is 170 kilowatts. And this three hour period, that is 30 kilowatts. And if I look at a high school, much larger load, peak load is at 400 kilowatts. So this block of time, three hours times 100 kilowatts, that is 300 kilowatt hours right there. So the object of this competition is to reduce the area under this curve, both bring down the height of the curve and not so much about limiting the spikes that you see here. So, as I said, e-gauge devices come in defaulted to one day view. You can zoom into 12 hours, 6 hours, 3 hours, or 10 minutes. 10 minutes is almost real time. You can see that it's scrolling here. To the right, this bar is the real time power usage in this school. And this pattern you see here is a mechanical system in the school that's running at night um, to keep the heat going. If you want to set a specific amount of time, you can choose that on this pull down menu. I could say I'd like to see from Monday at 12 a.m. to today at 12 a.m. or at 5 a.m., whatever. I can set that, and it will zoom into that section of time. And it recalculates in this blue area to say, here's how much energy was used over that period of time. And in this case, it's 2.14 megawatt hours. A megawatt hour is 1,000 kilowatt hours. So this is a fair amount of energy because you're talking about two full days. And then to the right, this green box, these are set time values from a certain starting point. This does not change as you scale this. If you want to download this, this information, download this into a spreadsheet, there is an export option here. It will download as a CSV, that's a comma separated value file, that will open in Excel or other spreadsheet programs. And you can specify whether it's going to be average power over the increments in the graph, or whatever increments you download. 
Uh, you can download by the day, by the hour, by the minute, and you can download by the second if you're talking about the most recent hour. You can also download total energy, the cumulative energy over the period in that, import, in that export. And then another thing to note in here is you can jump around in time. So while I've set the scale to say a day in this case, if I want to see the previous day, I can just hit this back arrow here, etc., etc. I'm backing up in time. If I hit this button, I jump to the beginning of time for this device. So this device was installed and first started reading in March and then hitting this button brings back into the current time. So looking at a middle school, what's happening at this school? You can see nighttime loads here. That's ventilation, you know, heating through the night. Then as the day starts, there's a very abrupt power on for this school. They're turning all the lights on in fairly quick succession. There's a load through the day, and then they shut things down fairly quickly. Uh, these are good tactics to conserve energy. You know, slowly ramping up power, slowly ramping it down. If they're in and out, um, they can save power, save energy. And then looking at the high school, there's a more gradual start. These are big schools, so you know, it's not realistic to think that they can come in and turn everything on at once. And then there are after school activities. So in the competition, we're comparing the schools against themselves, and this is a regular pattern for a high school, whereas this is a typical pattern for a middle school and a grade school. So how do you use these devices to uh, save electricity in your school for the competition? Well, you can zoom in and look over short periods of time and as you go around your school and you turn off lights you'll see those values change here in this real-time bar and you'll also see those effects over time. You know, This is best done you know, late in the day after most of the activities are done in the school and you can characterize the loads here. You have a much more no noisy signal up here during the day. You can still go around and do those exercises there and figure out what comprises this load. Looking at a given day and comparing it to previous days, you can determine whether you're doing a better job you know, turning off lights early or turning them on later and whether you're reducing the height of this curve. If I look at multiple days here, you can see that the peak usage here is consistently lower than the usage on Monday. And there's more power down occurring on these days earlier. And as I said, base load, they call it that because it is the base. It's as low as you go, and that is consistently around 40 kilowatt hours in the school. So anything that you can do to determine what comprises this load and reduce that so that when you leave school you're not continuing to use you know as much electricity over the evening and through the night reducing that because there's so much area under this will add up during the course of the rest of the competition so that's a great area to focus on and your mentors and your custodians can help you with that they understand the school um, they can help you find those things and they can help you work within the rules of the competition as to what you can control So going back to the presentation, you can see these patterns, weekly patterns, where different days vary. There are different activities after school in this high school. You can see when the school is having a non-standard day. You can see the weekends. You can see there's weekend activity here. This is, this is normal activity for Erie High School. And you can see this late start. 
you're looking at a given day, you can see these ventilation loads. You can see this gradual start in the case of Erie High School. You can see when they start their lunch, and you can see the after school activities here. In Coal Ridge, you can see that ventilation load at night. You can see a much more abrupt start to the day. You can see power trailing off as they're having their lunch hours. And you can see the end of the normal academic day. And again, there's an after school activity here. But you'll note the area under this curve is much, much smaller than the area here. Um, it's a lower load, it's a smaller event. So going back to those base loads, this is a matter of adding up all of the small things that you know are plugged in and you know are operating. There are some good tools here in this presentation. You have a plug load meter in your energy kit. Uh, take advantage of that. Make a list, go around, add things up, and figure out what you can unplug what you can power down, what has power saving modes. Computers individually don't use a lot of power, but when you have many, many computers, that adds up to be quite a bit. So making sure your computers are powered down you know, when you do not need them, power down overnight, that makes a big difference here, as do other plug loads in the school. So this is a brief overview of the eGauge interface. We certainly want you to take advantage of these devices and please ask questions. Ask your mentor, ask your faculty advisor. Uh, please ask us for help with these devices because we would like you to do as well as you can in this competition and we're here to help. Thank you.